Good afternoon, and thank you for joining us. I am at the lovely Hart School. A little bit. Uh, we are here with our performance and moving forward uh, presentation. I'm here with Professor Snedeker to talk a little bit about trumpet and how we can practice in this time of isolation uh, and using all the resources we have. So without further ado, I pass along the great Phil Schnedeker. All right, thanks for having me, Maggie. Uh, I'm just gonna talk uh, briefly about how, how we can improve in this pandemic because we're all stuck at home. Uh, I'm stuck in my studio, you're stuck in your, your, your bedroom at your parents' house probably that you grew up in, you're, you're there and you will need to improve on your instrument, right? So, so how do we do that? Uh, you might or might not have access to a private teacher this summer. The good news is you can still improve on your instrument. Now, whether you play trumpet or clarinet or flute or violin or cello, you can do this with all instruments. I'm going to demonstrate this with the trumpet, but this concept is exactly the same. So, so I did this long before this uh, pandemic, and that is I studied with some of the greatest players in the world. How did I do it? Uh, I just found the recordings and listen to them four bars at a time. Okay, that's the, the last part is the key. Don't listen to an hour of them. You can, that's cool. Like I, I listened to an hour of Maurice Andre and it's awesome, right? But if I listen to him four bars at a time and then play right back to him or her, whoever you're listening to, four bars at a time, you're literally getting inside their head, both pitch, sound, phrasing, all the elements that we as players need to have in our heads when we pick up the instrument is right there in front of you, okay? And most of you use, use YouTube, that's fine. YouTube is great. In fact, it gives you a visual uh, image of what's actually happening, so you're not just using your imagination from the recording, but you can use recordings. I use recordings, but today we're going to use some YouTube videos. So um, <clears throat> let me just demonstrate exactly what I'm talking about, and I'm going to share my screen here. We're going to start with Maurice Andre and the Haydn Trumpet Concerto. Okay, those of you that are trumpet players know Maurice Andre was one of the legends of trumpet soloists. He was a great French trumpet player, and he had the quintessential Haydn and Hummel recordings. So we're going to start out with a, a performance that was actually videoed live, uh, and I'm going to, let me just show you what I'm talking about here. Okay, so here's, here's Mr. Uh, uh, Andre, and we're going to play from a section in the Haydn. And I'm going to stop it right there. That's all I'm going to do. In fact, I'll, I'll, I'll play it again. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up my trumpet. And I'm going to go... Just like Maurice did. I'm going to mimic everything about what he did. I'm going to mimic the vibrato, I'm going to mimic the, the, the sound, I'm going to mimic the pitch. I'm going to do everything that he did. Now, for those of you that say, well, that's just, you know, that's not creative license. Fine, there's time for that later. You can do all the creative, you know, me-isms later. But right now, I just want to sound like Maurice. That's all I want to do, right? So I'm going to take my trumpet again, and I'm going to do this one more time. And again, and I might do that four or five times before I go on to this. All right, and I might do that four or five times. You see where I'm going here with this, guys? I'm just, four bars at a time, I'm learning from Maurice Andre. He's given me a lesson and he has no idea. I can do this with any number of pieces, and I'm going to just quickly kind of show you some of the different types of pieces that I do this with. Um, by the way, you can do this with different players. So, so let's say you, want, you don't want to hear Maurice Andre's version of this. You want to hear Wynton Marcellus' version of this, right? So here we go. I'm going to study with Wynton right now.
Now, one of the things I like about this Winton recording is that he kind of looks around the audience when he plays. So that's what I'm going to do. <laughs> Like he's looking and to communicate with people, the eyes get really big, and he's always communicating. So I'm going to mimic that as well. He plays a little faster than Maurice Andre, just a little different, but it's both good, right? So again, I'm studying with both of these guys, and they don't even know it. All right, um, let's go to another very famous piece that everybody knows, the Hummel Trumpet Concerto. And um, again, this is a live performance of Maurice Andre. And, and let's just do what we, we were doing a second ago. And all I'm going to do is do that trill. Exactly like he does it. I'm going to get inside his sounds. If you have a constant diet of Maurice and all these great players, and pick your own great players, uh, I'm, I'm about to go on to another great player in a second that, that has been making a splash lately, then, then you will know more what you want to sound like when you pick up this piece of plumbing, okay? And when you're playing, you have to have that sound in your head. You can't just operate the buttons. The buttons don't do anything, right? All right, um, we're going to go on to somebody who has been posting famous etudes ever since this pandemic started. And his name is Hoken Harkenberger, and he's a famous soloist, and he's been posting Charlier etudes. Now, Charlier, most of you know, is a famous uh, uh, 36 transcendental uh, uh, etudes is one of the most famous trumpet books ever. And Hokan has been posting these and giving us a whole new take on what these are supposed to sound like. Hopefully, I can stop before number 36. But if not, I'll just take another book of etudes. And hopefully, it will keep me in shape and give some entertainment and inspiration to all of you. OK. So, four bars, right? The four bar rule. Okay, I didn't do it quite right, so I'm going to go back and listen to him. And he kind of accentuates that B, right? He doesn't play it just straight through. He goes, I'm going to do exactly like him. And really, this has been a revelation for me because he's doing this so much more musically than I've always been taught. I've always been taught just, you know, play it like in tempo. But he somehow phrases this a little differently. Now I'm going to do the next four bars. Can you see the nuances I'm trying to do there? I'm trying to match his pitch, his sound, his inflections, everything. I'm going to go on like this. I could do like this for an hour, right? And then pretty soon I'm going to be putting it together like eight bars and 16 bars. And pretty soon I'm going to be playing it exactly like Hokan. Okay? So, so there's great value in this in so many ways because you're really getting inside the heads of these great musicians, not just trumpet players, but musicians. I'm going to go on to a couple of standard excerpts right now. So people say, well, that's all fine and good for solos and etudes, but what about excerpts? I have to learn pictures in an exhibition or pines, and I'm, I'm really struggling with it, you know, and my teachers and, you know, on vacation in South America, and I don't have anybody to teach me. 
that's not right. You've got a lot of people to teach you. You've got some of the greatest orchestral trumpet players in the world. And let's start with let's start with Mr. Bud Herseth, who used to be principal trumpet for the Chicago Symphony. And I'm just going to play that much. That's it. I'm not going to play the whole movement. I'm just going to play that. And in my mind, I'm going to be Bud. I'm going to be sitting there in that chair in Japan, wherever they are on tour, with Salty in front of me, and I'm going to be doing it. I'm going to use my imagination to be Bud Herseth. Okay? Um... But turns out there's other players in Bud Herseth in the world. So let's say let's say I want somebody else's interpretation. Let's say I want um, Bernie Adelstein, who used to be principal trumpet of the Cleveland Orchestra years ago. Okay, completely different interpretation, right? Different tempo, different. Uh, there's hardly any vibrato on this, but it's really stately. So that's what I'm going to do. And all of a sudden, I'm going to be that interpretation, right? And so when the next time a conductor asks me to do something differently, I'll be able to do that. Not only that, but I'll have so many different uh, interpretations in my head that I'll be able to decide what I want to do. Which, is, which gets to the artistic part, right? Like you're imitating these people, but you have an option of doing any one of a number of interpretations that you've internalized, and you're able to do it. All right, uh, good. Uh, let's do it with a slow excerpt. Let's do it with Pines of Rome. Okay, here's, our, here's Phil Smith doing Pines of Rome. Okay, again, four bars, and the interesting thing about this is when I listen to it, I think, wow, it's, it sounds so fluid. Like, like so many people play this, and they're like, dee, da, 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 but he just kind of skims over the top of it. So that's what I'm going to do. And you can hear the strings under me, right? I'm like listening for the strings under me. So... So many things I'm getting from these players that um, that I wouldn't ordinarily get if I just practiced it in the practice room. Okay, is that making sense? Does anybody have any questions? Uh, you could pretty much do this with any style of music. Uh, the challenge sometimes is finding a really good recording. So if you're playing the the Andante and Allegro by Barat, which is you know a typical solo piece, uh, on, maybe on a a, a, an early advanced level, you might have a trouble. You might have trouble finding a really great recording of that because Winton or Phil Smith probably didn't record that. Although I think Phil Smith did record a lot of these in his things called concert uh, concert studies. Uh, so look around, do, do your research, find these recordings, and then study with them. And there's, listen, you got all summer for this. You could get a lot done this summer, a lot done, and 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 you could come back and you could sound better than all of your friends if you do this. I guarantee it. Thank you so much, Phil. That is actually really insightful. Uh, and thank you for your time with us today. Uh, it was great to learn about how we can study with those who we normally would not have access to. And you're right, we have all summer and really the rest of our lives to work on this type of stuff. So thank you so much for your time today. Uh, and I'm sure that we all got a lot out of this.